Halo Season 2 Episode 4 is out, and this is the one that everyone's been looking forward to. I go through the show on its own merits and compared to the lore. The only highlight from this episode was Captain Keyes' speech. Sorry, Admiral Keyes' speech. Everything about this otherwise was horrendous. The show thinks that by killing people, it's emotional. You have to care about the people dying for it to be emotional. If you go back to my trailer reaction video, I said that they were going to make some excuse for Chief not to be in his armor for this big fight. Not only was I right about that, none of the Spartans have their armor. The world building in this show is ridiculous. We have yet another scene where the Covenant can kill Master Chief and just lets him walk away. Cortana somehow gets stolen. She's just a chip waiting to be picked up. And the Covenant attacked like they were terrorists by setting off bombs throughout the city. It's amazing how much wasted opportunity there was in this episode. And every episode we get convinces me further that this show was supposed to be something else. Some kind of spy thriller or something. And they just slapped Halo on it because they had nothing else to do with it for season two. The only other positive is that Quan isn't in the episode. So that's a win for everybody. But yeah, this was supposed to be the peak of the season. This was the episode to get everyone all aboard. And it fell flat on its face. So I'm going to go scene by scene and let's get into it. To start off, we get Vanek talking to birds. I don't know why the showrunners thought this was funny to make Vanek take his pellet out. And then the thing that he likes is sharks and birds. But you see what I'm talking about when I say it looks like a terrorist attack. Like this to me looks like it was supposed to be some kind of spy thriller. Why the Covenant would attack like this, these tactics, none of it makes sense. Or the show or the lore. In the lore, the Covenant are pretty direct. They show up, kill, overrun with numbers and force and technology. They actually view this kind of thing as underhanded human tactics. And this is stuff you find out way down the road. But obviously the showrunners would never know that. I guess the Covenant are shitty terrorists because John was in a building that looked like the windows blew in. And then when we cut to this one, him and Perez are just running down the street. And you can see he doesn't have his armor. None of them have their armor for the whole episode because Ackerson stole it and fled. So they turned their main villain into a coward, which is absolutely stupid writing wise. But also by not having them in their armor for the entire episode, it devalues the armor and it makes the enemies less scary. If the Spartans don't need their armor to fight the elites, how much of a threat are they? If they don't need their armor and can still fight and shoot and do the same things without the enhancements, why wear it? So it really devalues the armor. It shits on the world building because Ackerson stole these suits. No one can wear them except for the Spartans. They have a line in here about retreating with their valuables. That doesn't include the fucking Spartans. It makes no sense. And they just took their armor that no one can wear. So a lot of good that does. Anyway, Perez is freaking out because her family's dead. John's trying to drag her down the street until she agrees to come along. One of the first scenes we get is Soren and Halsey. They can hear the rumbling outside. Not really much happens here. They're just kind of surprised that the war has reached reach. And this is a massively missed opportunity. Soren's like, I didn't know what I wanted to say to you. And all he says is, you look shorter than I remember. Such cheesy dialogue, so unoriginal, and they wasted this entire opportunity. They talk a little bit more as the episode goes on, but they don't really talk about much in depth. One of the things that I was kind of looking forward to is when Soren met her, them having some kind of argument about if what she did was right. And they loosely do, because she says you were the most eager one. And he's like, yeah, I was six. And she's like, yeah, and you already know what you wanted to be. They're locked in a prison cell together. This is the time for them to have the conversation about his life being stolen from him, not being able to do what he wanted. His body is deformed now. All he trying to say that their efforts helped fight back the covenant and make the war last as long as it has, all that kind of stuff. And we just get like a little bit of generic bullshit about how she helped him escape. And she asks how his family's doing and stuff, and he doesn't like her, and he doesn't want her to pretend to be friendly. Really a huge missed opportunity for the writing here. The power goes down, Soren walks out, and Halsey follows him, and she says that she's going to lead them to escape. He doesn't trust her, but he has to go with her because he doesn't know where they're at in this big-ass base. We go back to John and Perez. They're in the middle of town. They escaped all the explosions, and no one here has noticed anything, even though there's fucking explosions rocking the entire city. <laughs> Whatever. Perez is losing her mind, and eventually some camouflage elites show up and start killing people here. John finds a Sangheili and fights it barehanded. And the idea of a Spartan without his armor fighting an elite barehanded is so stupid. The elites range from like seven to nine feet tall. And in a full suit of armor, they're supposed to be about equal strength. In the book, there's a scene like this where Chief fights an elite and he has to use like actual martial arts and leverage to beat it in a fight. Like hand to hand because the elite has a sword. And I hate this so much that these elites are running around invisible, smacking people. And it's like, why don't they have fucking guns or swords at least? They have this technology and they're running around empty-handed to scare people, I guess. They're treating them as 
dumb aliens from the movie Alien who were just supposed to be scary instead of a sentient race conquering the galaxy on a religious quest. So this fight, you can tell the special effects don't look very good. This is why the Chief's not an armor all episode probably. And this is also why a lot of the action takes place off screen. Even throughout this episode, a lot of the action, you're just watching a character fire a gun and they don't show what they're actually shooting because they can't afford it, I'm assuming. All of this stuff makes the enemies stupid and less scary. And it's just bad writing. Every person who wrote this show in season one shouldn't even be allowed to look at a fucking keyboard again, let alone write a script. We get a really brief scene here where Soren is annoyed that he has to follow Halsey. And she says, trust me. And he says, fuck off, essentially. And of course, right in the middle of the action-packed episode that you've been waiting for, Chief and Perez run away. <laughs> Civilians in saying Healy everywhere, and he goes and hides in a fucking antique shop. To be fair, he is going to reunite with his unit, but still, I would think he would want to save everyone that he could. But I guess that's just me. Kind of an indictment on his character, that he goes and hangs out in an antique shop in the middle of a fucking invasion. And this scene's really a waste. It's supposed to be deep. It's not. There's some old lady here who says she's not leaving her shop, and she knows she's going to die. And she talks about preserving the things that make humanity human. It doesn't really work when you're talking about a species as well as it does a country or a race or something specific. You have a scene like Thor Ragnarok where they say that Asgard is wherever the Asgardians are because they still have themselves and their culture and all that type of thing. But with humanity, it's just wherever humans live. The message doesn't really work as well. And this scene is also just kind of a filler to pad the runtime. We go back. Halsey's trying to ask Thorne about his kid. She knows his name. She says it was hard to let you go because you had so much potential. And he says, what do you mean let me go? I escaped. And then later she reveals that she made sure that he could escape. Not a huge twist or anything really interesting. It feels like they want us to see them bonding and kind of reuniting, but they're not really doing anything. They're just kind of plodding along. <laughs> Again, just a massive whiff for what this scene could have been and what their interactions could have been. Obviously, you could have set up the whole thing where Soren's super pissed off at her. He's like really mad at her. And then slowly he forgives her for his own benefit or whatever you want to motivate it by, but do something instead of your kidnapper is being nice to you and you're protecting her. Really just a waste. Continuing on, John runs into Riz, Lewis, and his husband. They're all fighting together, kind of trying to fight, shooting up at these saying Healy in like an apartment building. Lewis has a gun that looks like the Reach grenade launcher. That's another nice touch that is really shallow. Something I forgot to mention was they cover the coin flip thing from the book. And that's just another one of those things where I'm like, oh, they read the Halopedia, yanked a scene from it, mentioned it so that the Halo fans would be like, oh, they mentioned it. And then just keep going on with their show. Every reference the show makes is surface level. They don't understand Halo or the characters beyond the surface. They had this fight. You really don't see much because the budget's so low, I guess. It's just kind of them firing their gun around this concrete brick. And they say they're going to run in and clear out this building. Not really a ton to say here. They go through the apartment. Lewis's husband dies because he was going in to try to help people as a doctor or whatever. Pretty uncompelling combat. They just kind of walk through and mow them down in hallways. Throw a couple grenades here and there. They've really toned down any kind of gore or violence. I'm sure because everything they do is about mass appeal. So there's nothing in that area. Nothing creative, really. They just kind of go through and kill Covenant. This is a weird thing to me that they did in the show is they have the Sang Healy or the elites as like their own thing. And then later the jackals show up and it's all jackals. We don't see any grunts and we don't see any mixing of covenant races or species. I'm not really sure what the reasoning for that decision was. And I also don't know why the Sang Healy only use swords in this show. Like they used guns last season and guns here would be pretty proficient. They don't completely not use guns, but they don't use them very often in the show. Not really sure what motivated that decision. Not sure how much sense it makes. But yeah, there's not too much to say about this. Just, just kind of generic action mowing down the Covenant equivalent of red shirts. I also forgot to mention how ridiculous it is that the blind Spartan fights. Because at no point does it really hinder him. He just says, I can hear you guys. And then fights like he's normal. This kind of reminds me of John Wick 4 with Donnie Yen. Where he says he's blind. But it matters at like no point in the fucking story. <laughs> We get a really dumb scene here where the Wraith shows up and it's just bombing the shit out of everything. They made the Wraiths fire their bombs, by the way. Almost automatic fire. It's crazy how fast they shoot. And also, this self-sacrifice scene is supposed to be touching, I guess. But we don't give a fuck about this guy. I don't know anybody who gives a shit about Lewis. He showed up for like five minutes and all we know is he's a blind washout. And that he was married and now he's a widower, I guess. For like two minutes until he kills himself. But he literally just walks toward the Wraith with... 
a belt of grenades. And I guess there's no foot soldiers on the sides of the wraith like you would have in a normal tank. So it works, whatever. He blows himself up, takes the wraith out. You're supposed to be sad. If you were ever wondering if the writers of this show were kind of retarded or fully retarded, they make sure every character in the show is fully retarded. So I think it's a safe assumption to assume that they all are as well. Ackerson took all the high value assets, left Cortana behind. <laughs> Halsey finds her. Cortana says run. A saying Healy shows up and Maki grabs Cortana's chip, which isn't even a chip. It's just like a little pedestal thing sitting on the table and she just takes it. One of their most valuable resources they just fucking leave behind that anyone can just walk in and pick up. And on top of that, Maki and some big elite have a chance to kill Soren and Halsey. Valuable resources. And he just kind of growls and stares them down and leaves. Soren has a pistol, but it doesn't even penetrate the elite shield. And plot armor is one of the core tenets of this show, along with bad writing, obviously. This is just mind-boggling to me. That they go out of their way to say we took the high-value assets and evacuated them from the planet, and they leave Cortana, their most advanced AI. Unreal. And that Maki and the Sangheili just walk straight to her, presumably in the deepest part of the base. And that Maki and the Elite leave Halsey and Soren alive. All of it's retarded. And Maki knows who Halsey is. She met her last season. It's just insane. And people are calling this the episode that brought them back in on Reddit and shit. It's wild. <laughs> oh, man. They get back to Fleetcom and they're hoping to suit up. Riz has like the PTSD thing where she's hearing echoes and voices and shit and whatever. And Perez is acting like a jilted ex-lover to John because he's like, okay, see ya. And then he gives her his coin and says, good luck. Wonderful setup and payoff to talk about a coin and then give it to her. Fuck you. Fuck this show. Anyway, I love the idea of all those Spartans having PTSD when they've been trained to be killers their entire lives, which at this point, I believe they're in their mid to late 30s. Obviously, there's some stuff where they travel in cryo, whatever. They've been fighting for decades. Now they have PTSD because they took the pellets out. Keys apologizes to John, says, hey, sorry, you were right. All fine. I like Keys. I actually like the actor, too, even though they fucking race swapped him. But he tells John he was right, gives him the rundown of what he saw with Ackerson. Keys says that they're going to get overrun, and they need to create a bottleneck, and John says Thermopylae. And Keys says, yeah. For people who don't know, Thermopylae is the battle that you saw in 300, and the, gen and the gist of it is a small amount of Spartans held off a ton of Persians because they bottlenecked them into one spot, so numbers didn't matter, is the idea. Halsey's freaking out because Cortana's gone. Soren wants to know what Halsey meant by letting him leave, and she explains that she let him go, that he didn't just escape on his own. And this is supposed to be the touching moment from their reunion where your kidnapper releases you out of the kindness of their heart because you're now essentially an amputee with one functioning fucking arm. Wonderful writing. He's asked John to hold his hat, and Keyes gives a speech to everybody to let him know the stakes. They all need to fight and die while the civilians escape. And this is by far the best part of the episode, and probably of the show that I can think of, including the action scenes and everything. This scene is the only one for me that actually works. And he points out that they have John, even though he doesn't have his armor. He doesn't need it because they're fighting for humanity and that sort of thing. And then every minute they buy, more civilians escape who can live their lives. And this is the type of thing that I find frustrating, is even with the race swap of keys, this actor obviously does a good job in this scene. And if they had given him better material, he probably still would have been a good character. <laughs> it's so annoying to watch talent be wasted like that by bad writers. Obviously, all the military people get jacked up and motivated. John's a little bit surprised, and he's like, what are you doing, Keys? Because Keys is going to fight also, but Keys is in charge, so he can do what he wants. Something I do find interesting about this is that the show framed it as really negative earlier when Ackerson used the Master Chief as propaganda, but Keys blatantly uses him here, and you're supposed to root for it and support it. It didn't bother me either time, because wars depend on morale, especially something like this that would be an extinction event. I just think it's interesting that the show, I don't think, realizes what they did. That they had the bad guy and the good guy both use John the same way for propaganda. <laughs> I just wanted to mention it because I thought it was odd. That's all. But yeah, if you want to watch anything from this show, this speech is probably it. I think it's one of the only good things about the show's writing so far. One thing I do think is funny about this speech that I didn't notice the first time that I watched it was that he says that, that they'll write this story about the great women and men who fought today. Not men and women, which is how most people say it. <laughs> Not a huge deal. But I don't know if I've ever actually heard someone say women and men before. Almost everyone says men and women. And they do have a nice little detail in here where when people realize that he's the Master Chief not in his armor, they're all kind of like looking at each other and surprised and stuff. 
this is the type of thing that would work better though if the Spartans were more hidden. Because in the books and the lore, they're much more secretive. Only certain people know about them. They get sent on missions on their own. They're kind of a myth. Like even at the beginning of this show in season one, they refer to the Spartans as boogeymen. Like people don't even know if they're real or if they're human. But when we see the show, we've seen John walking around without his armor all over the base, all over the city, hanging out at the gym. <laughs> kind of takes away the mythos of that reveal. Here's a pretty neat shot that I wanted to show. I really wish they had made the fire look more like plasma instead of just our bombs. But also, this show does something repeatedly where they just pretend like no one has fucking radar. Like they're waiting at this bridge for the Covenant to come across, and John's like, shoot a flare. So they shoot the flare across, and everything glows up, and there's like hundreds of Sangheili. And it's like, you guys didn't have fucking radar? You don't have mounted turrets on this bridge? Like, what are we doing here? Not really much to say here. We get a lot of them just kind of ducking behind the wall and shooting at like a wave of Sangheili. They treat them like zombies, because they're not really shooting back that much, and they don't have guns or anything, it seems like, so... Not a lot to say. I, I just thought this was a neat shot, and it's still retarded that they never have fucking radar. Halsey informs Keys that Cortana has been stolen. Soren is kind of making jokes like, you two need to get a room. Really not much to say about this. They don't really do much with this other than buy a little bit of time and kind of take up space and put a little bit of shitty humor in. And you can see here how awkward it is between the three of them. Not really much to say about it. This is all just kind of nothing. They're heading toward the ship to evacuate, and Soren hears a noise. And we see the Kid Yar slash Jackals throw these things up like they're scaling a castle wall. And there's a whole bunch of them that jump up here. I think this tech is kind of stupid because they can jump and boost and stuff. But whatever. It seems like it would require more technology to have some kind of thing that you can throw up, turn the magnet on or whatever it works, and they can all climb it. Then they just have like boosters in their feet or on their back or whatever. John, Vanek, and Riz find out that the Jackals are attacking the ship up top so they go to head back while the marines buy them time soren's fighting off the jackals to try to buy time not really much to say here the jackals are just kind of mowing them down which makes the next scene actually really frustrating <laughs> even more frustrating sorry the ship is stuck because the fuel lines are still connected key says i'll be back and perez is going to fly the ship away because i guess just anyone can fly the ship they don't have pilots i don't know pretty obvious setup for what's going to happen to keys in a minute here where he fucking dies Keys unhooks the lines and says Perez take off. Halsey and Soren run away because they can't kill all these jackals. And the people who are coping and say they love this show will call this some kind of sad death. This whole scene is absolutely awful. The jackals just stop shooting. They surround Keys. They all kind of stand there. Don't do anything. Keys has a whole conversation with Perez. Halsey gets to scream no and all that shit. Halsey's outburst is so out of character. The only time you really see emotion from her in the books is when she finds out that Miranda died in Halo 3. And even then, she just cries quietly to herself in her prison cell. This whole thing is so out of character. The jackals just stop attacking for drama. The whole scene is poorly executed. They have Keys give some cheesy-ass one-liner where he puts a pipe in his mouth and says, Got a light. Absolutely everything about this is awful. They wasted his character. And I can only assume that they assume they're getting a season 3. At which point, Miranda will take over Keyes' plotline for what would be Halo Combat Evolved. God willing, this show will be canceled soon, and it won't matter. I wanted to point this out because it's a neat shot. Not too much to say about it. It actually made me more pissed off thinking about Halsey getting upset over Keyes' death again when she's completely robotic and her and Keyes haven't been together since they had Miranda, who's like in her 20s at this point. Like It's not like they had some close relationship still. Halsey was off doing her own thing and is an asshole. But now that Ackerson's the big bad, we have to humanize her, I guess. This is something that I want to point out that's strictly a lore thing, which I don't usually do. But it frustrates me because this is the type of thing that lets you know the showrunners have no interest in the long-term investment of the show, in the world building, in the lore. Even in good writing, honestly. The Jackals are using their swords with shields here. Which, tactically, I mean, how primitive is this in the year fucking 2550? 2552. But also... When you have different species, you want them to have different fighting styles. Like if you're a fan of Lord of the Rings, Gimli is short but strong. Legolas is very agile. He fights with his bow and arrow a lot. He tries to keep his distance. He's speedy. Here, they have the jackals and elites pretty much are interchangeable. And the reason this is frustrating to me is because if you look at the bigger lore, or any of the lore really, the Kigyar were forced into submission by the Covenant to join. The Kigyar's personality is also very cowardly, kind of piratey there's no honor 
So they fight with shields and rifles that they hide behind. That's why they use plasma pistols. The elites are very honor-driven, very samurai-inspired. Like They raise their kids in communal areas so they don't know who their parents are, so there's no nepotism. They fight with swords, and they slash themselves if they don't get kills because they've dishonored themselves and all kinds of shit. They have the mark of shame. That's where it comes from is the elites. The grunts are scared of the elites and are kind of kamikazes because they're also forced into it by the Covenant who attacked their home planet and made them join. The hunters fight in pairs because they have a bond or like a partner for life. So the fact that they have them using shields and swords is tactically stupid. And also they just have no interest in the bigger picture or the world building or the lore or doing anything that would be interesting with the fighting styles. So I just wanted to point that out. Something I want to point out for the show, because it's stupid in its own right, they have John jump into this box. They're in a short hallway with no cover and no one shoots him. <laughs> and again, this is what I meant when I said the armor is being devalued this entire episode. They're having this whole fight with all these Covenant in no armor. It makes the Covenant less scary. They're being taken on by Spartans in vast numbers with no armor. Just bad writing, bad decision making all around. Eventually we get this version of the Arbiter. He's taller and bigger and has the fancy armor. Him and John on equal footing without John being in armor. It's fucking terrible. I don't even really have much else to say about it. It's just fucking awful. And Halo isn't the type of show that's conducive to having like some kind of one-on-one -on -one with the big bad guy, which is what they set up here. These two have a fight in the middle of everyone until another elite interferes, which it's a war. That's what he should do. And the Arbiter is pissed off and cuts his head off. Again, just a total lack of understanding of the Sangheili culture, of the Halo lore, or of good writing. Vanek gets kind of a shitty death where he shoots the Arbiter guy with a needler. The Arbiter takes the needle out and stabs him and it blows up his chest. I guess you're supposed to care. What do we really know about Vanek besides he's a tall black dude with a deep voice who likes birds and sharks? That's his whole personality. So they want this to be tragic? Fucking not. John starts freaking out and doing the no type shit. No one cares. Here's John screaming no. I'm going to use this for the thumbnail because it's hilarious. <laughs> In a better show, he would have had a stoic, restrained, upset look instead of screaming no, which is just generic, cheesy bullshit as Vanek dies. And also completely out of character. But again, Chief's character in this is just angry or simp. So I wanted to show this image also because the elite that he's about to cut the head off of shoots John in the middle of their duel. So he cuts his head off as if they're not in the middle of a fucking war. This trope of the bad guy killing his own men is so fucking terrible. It's so misused. And in this show, it's even more out of place. And again, devaluing the armor, wearing the heavy plot armor. John gets shot point blank with a fucking plasma pistol. Walks it off. He's good. Fuck it. And what type of plot armor is John wearing this time? He's saved by McKee. Why? Fuck it. Who knows? The story needs to go on. So she steps in and says, not yet. They just walk off. Unfucking believable that someone wrote this and put this on screen. This probably passed through dozens of eyes and no one was like, hey, this is really fucking stupid. Unreal. My only assumption is that she still likes John because he gave her the Spartan D and they're going to get back together at some point. <laughs> I don't fucking know. This show is so fucking bad. And this is the end of the show. Here's the sad music. We're all supposed to be sad that Vanek died, even though we know nothing about him. He hasn't really done much. R.I.P. 2024. Yeah, this show is the one that people are saying really turned the corner and now it's a good show. It's fucking not. It's a bad show. It's incompetent. The writing is bad. The budget is not equipped to deal with an alien race. The writers are not equipped to deal with anything. I wouldn't trust them to write a fucking postcard. I hope the show gets canceled soon. If you're still here, let me know what you thought. I respond to all the comments that aren't just insults. Like and subscribe and all that shit. Thanks. See ya.